Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's town hall meeting. This is our 34th live town hall. I can't believe it. It is so nice to be off of Zoom and see uh, friendly faces and new faces here with us in the hearing room. My name is Commissioner Abe Layden. I'm joined with several experts and my fellow commissioners. But tonight we're talking about the American Rescue Plan Act. And, you know, for us in Douglas County, one of our largest themes is we don't do things to people, we do things with people. And so we love having the conversation with stakeholders, our neighbors, both uh, here in Douglas County and outside of Douglas County. The American Rescue Plan Act of 2021 was passed by Congress and signed into law on March 11th of 2021. The act allocates $350 billion in stimulus funds to state, local, and tribal governments recovering from the impacts of COVID-19. ARPA allocates funding to governmental entities based on population, and Douglas County received $62.8 million. And actually, that's, I don't think that's right. It's 68.2. Wow. All right. So I've actually memorized that. That's good. Douglas County received about 50% of the funds in May of 2021 and will receive the other 50% in May of 2022. So the county must commit the full ARPA allocation by 2024 and spend by the end of 2026. So we're here tonight to talk about how we can best utilize these funds and to get your input. Before we get started, Commissioner Thomas will tell you a, a bit, I'm sorry, Commissioner Teal will tell you a bit about the format for tonight's call. Commissioner Teal. Hey, thanks, Abe. Um, so, hey, everybody, thank you for coming. Um, one of the things when we first heard uh, from our lobbyist in Washington, D.C., about what was being planned for the American Rescue Plan, and that figure of 68 million got tossed out, um, I was rather incredulous. I couldn't believe that Number one, that that amount, that much money was going to be spent by Congress across the country. But number two, that that much money was going to come here into the county. Um, obviously, we have a very robust budget that tends to uh, every year uh, bump up against the half billion dollar mark uh, with our capital projects as well as our ongoing uh, budgetary needs. But 68 million, I don't know about you guys, but that's still a lot of money for me. And I hope you think that's a lot of money, and I hope you will recognize the, um, the responsibility that your commissioners do see in these funds and how they get spent for the people of Douglas County. So before we go on, they're making me read from a script, so I'm, I'm not a young guy like, uh, well, everybody up here. Um, uh, we are here tonight uh, live and look forward to hearing your thoughts and answering your questions during this community conversation. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to just tell you about the format for tonight's call. We want this to be very interactive, so if you would like to ask a question, please press star 3 on your telephone keypad. You will be transferred to an operator who will take down some basic information. Once the operator notes your information, you will be returned to the call and can listen to the conversation until it's your turn. Press R3 on your keypad to ask a question at any time. We know everyone has a lot of questions, and we will get to those very soon. But first, I would like to turn this over to my colleague, Commissioner Thomas. Thank you, Commissioner Teal. Good evening, everyone. I'm Laura Thomas. I'm one of your three Douglas County Commissioners. And I'd like to welcome you for those who are here in the room and those online. For any of you who know me, you should know that I have always been a fiscal hawk when it came to your tax dollars. And I've done everything I could to stop the growth of government, to keep government small and efficient. The thought of spending 68 million additional dollars kind of is hard for me to wrap my arms around. And I want you to know that I'm looking very hard at how we can spend these dollars in legacy ways. So they will benefit your children and your grandchildren because let's face it, they are the ones who are gonna be paying for this in the future, right? So as we go forward, I'd like to just let you know that we are here to talk about how we can best utilize these funds, but we want your input. The commissioners have identified the following five investment priorities for our ARPA funds. In alphabetical order, they are broadband, community recovery, economic recovery, 
mental and behavioral health, water and wastewater. So we're gonna be talking and taking questions and comments about these five priorities in alphabetical order. Please press star three to ask a question. And if you would like to participate online, you can visit douglas.co.us slash town hall. Roger, back to you. Thank you, commissioners. Again, as a reminder, please press star three on your telephone keypad and you'll be transferred to an operator who will take down some basic information. Once the operator notes your information, you'll be returned to the call and can listen to the conversation until it's your turn. Since we'd like to hear from as many folks as possible, we'll limit all speakers to one question. And when it's your turn, I'll call your name and ask you to repeat the question for our live audience. As Commissioner Thomas noted, we will be taking, talking and taking questions, comments about these five priorities in alphabetical order. So if you queue up with one topic, just hang on the line until we get to it. We know everyone has lots of questions and uh, we'll get to those very soon. But first I'd like to uh, ask Dan Avery to introduce himself and provide an overview. Dan, go ahead. Thank you, Roger. I'm Dan Avery. I'm a special projects manager with Douglas County. My primary role at the, at the present is managing our American Rescue Plan Act allocation. Um, my primary task tonight is to give a broad overview of the American Rescue Plan Act. For those of you who are in the room, this will be a bit duplicative from what you've seen on, uh, on the poster boards at the back of the room. The American Rescue, Act, uh, American Rescue Plan Act and the accompanying guidance provided by the Department of the Treasury defines categories of allowable uses. The funds can be used in a variety of ways to respond to the public health emergency, including COVID-19 mitigation and prevention, mental health and behavioral health services, and other COVID-19 responsive public health expenditures. The funds can also be used to respond to negative economic impact by providing assistance to impacted households, unemployed workers, businesses, nonprofit entities, and impacted industries. Funds can be used to support populations that were disproportionately impacted by the pandemic. Projects in this area can address access to health and social services, affordable housing and homelessness, the pandemic's impact on education and child care, and impacts to child welfare involved families and foster youth. A range of infrastructure investments are also allowable, including water, wastewater, stormwater, and broadband services in underserved areas. Finally, a range of expenditure categories are provided specifically for public entities including reimbursement for lost revenue, rehiring to pre-pandemic levels, hazard pay for essential workers, uh, and um, limited administrative costs. ARPA funds claimed by the county under the revenue loss provisions can be broadly used for governmental purposes. The American Rescue Plan Act funds cannot be used to bolster reserve funds, to offset tax cuts, to pay debt, legal settlements, or pension obligations. It's also important to note that federal guidance on the American Rescue Plan Act has at this point not been finalized. And there is federal legislation under active review that would further broaden potential uses of the money, including the construction of the potential construction of transportation infrastructure and a broad range of public facilities. In making investment decisions, the county will seek to ensure legacy benefit to respond to immediate needs first and then be forward looking to integrate opportunities with board priorities, to avoid duplication with other sources. And this has been important recently as we monitor um, potential legislation from the state as they consider ways to spend their funds and to leverage partnership opportunities. The five core investment priorities that have initially been developed are broadband community recovery, economic recovery, mental and behavioral health, and water and wastewater. To date, Douglas County has received nearly $280 million in project proposals, including over $247 million in water and wastewater projects alone, $16 million in community recovery oriented proposals, $9.7 million in mental health proposals, and approximately $10 million in economic development oriented proposals. We have staff representatives tonight that can speak to each of these areas. Thank you, Dan. So let's take our first question that has come in online. Janet asks, how were the priorities developed? I can take this question, Commissioner. 
the county began working with stakeholders early in the pandemic to quickly address emerging needs. Uh, this included the formation of the Human Needs Task Force, Economic Recovery Task Force, and the Pastor Roundtable. These efforts were instrumental in quickly allocating the CARES Act funding that the county received to areas in, of need. Uh, this collaboration has continued and expanded to include other stakeholder groups, including the Mental Health Initiative, the Housing Partnership, Community of Care Service Providers, Water Providers, our Homeless Initiative, and service providers that work with individuals with developmental disabilities. Many of the proposals that will be described tonight have emerged from these collaborative efforts. Thank you, Dan. Commissioner Layden. Yeah, so, so many people uh, took the time to be here with us tonight. It's important that uh, we actually open it up so people can ask questions. So uh, I just would like to open it up to the room tonight. Who has a question for the ARPA panel? Anybody here with us tonight? Yes, sir. Hi. What's your name and your, what's your question? My name is Jeremy Luther. Uh, I own a company called Altitude Exhibits. Uh, the original funding, um, we were denied uh, through not only the SDOG, but also the first round of public funding because we weren't an event center or we weren't a restaurant, we just support events. And so we were denied funding the first round because we didn't fall into the categories that you guys were allotting the uh, the, the money to go to. So um, there's a whole group of businesses that kind of got neglected. There were um, tons of um, rescue efforts for restaurants and for live events and for shuttered venues. We build trade show exhibits. So we needed those, you know, live events to be happening. Governor Polish shut down the convention center, but the convention center still received money in their lease. Um, and they still were eligible for the SVOG as a shuttered venue. Um, we saw none of that. And so I'm just wondering um, if, you know, I, I saw on one of the boards back there to not duplicate um, where, you know, funds have already been allocated, where, where grants have already been given. How, how are you guys going to be able to, you know, make sure that the, I, I feel like there's a forgotten sector out there. And so how are you going to be able to make sure that those businesses that do rely on, on live events and do, you know, needed those things to happen um, are supported? Thank you for that question. And I just want to remind everybody there are comment cards right back here. If you have comments or things that you want to share with us, you're also welcome to um, put those on the comment cards. Who wants to take that question? Thank you for your comments and your questions. Um, I think this is a perfect opportunity to express um, that need of your um, of your business and so we uh, I've written that down and we'll um, we'll take that under consideration thank you well and, and I might add too and maybe my commissioner colleagues might might want to ring in on this but um, I think we want to get out of the business of handing out government checks in general. I think there's some real perverse incentives associated with that, and we're thrilled that you're doing business in Douglas County and um, want to welcome that. But, uh, you know, we, we did see some severely impacted industries, I mean, restaurants in particular with the CARES Act funding, we allocated about $18 million. Um, and instead of backfilling government, we, we put that out um, in, into our business community. But I think that's a really valid point. I thank you for, for, for raising that. So we're going to move to our, uh, did other commissioners want to address that? I was just going to hand the microphone to Irina to talk about broadband. Yeah, that's on my, on my notes here. So let's talk about our first investment priority, broadband. Irina, did you want to introduce yourself and give a brief overview? Yes, thank you. So broadband's been identified as one of the five focus areas uh, by the commission. My name is Irina Stevens. I'm with an engineering consulting company, HR Green, that's uh, partnered with the county over the last few months. Uh, to do a broadband study um, that evaluates the um, availability and affordability of uh, unserved and underserved areas in the county. Uh, in this, this, this topic is particularly germane um, to current events, um, not only because, you know, over the last couple of years, a lot more people have had to do telework and remote education um, and, uh, and telehealth, um, but also because the federal government's also um, allocating an unprecedented amount of money for broadband infrastructure in the next few years. Um, a lot of the rules for that will be available probably around the fall of 2020. 
uh, to. And this, uh, this topic, this study, it'll help inform and uh, provide the information that's necessary for the county to have kind of a long-term strategic vision for an infrastructure that's really a long-term investment. Thank you, Irina. Let me just remind you, if you have a question and you're online, press star three on your keypad. You can also go online to douglas.co.us slash town hall. Commissioner Teal, do you have some more questions about broadband? Yeah, thanks, Laura. I appreciate it. Roger, I believe we have some uh, callers in the queue. Would you like to bring one of those up, please? Sure do. Ed, you are first. Go ahead. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Hello, yes, sir. Can you hear me? Excellent. I got to tell you, a negative impact of submitting a question earlier is that you've answered most of my questions. With that said, I have a slight adjustment. Is this a forum to discuss my nonprofit efforts that we've been performing in the community? Briefly, we feel that COVID has caused an increased shut in and greater opportunity for international and domestic fraud. My organization, HowWeHonor.org, go directly to senior living centers and other public venues to educate our most at-risk population to inoculate them from fraud. Is this an organization that is an opportunity for the ARPA program? At this stage of the game, um, really, we're interested in any ideas. Uh, I, I personally am very open to any ideas. I think uh, what you described about uh, the nonprofit that you run is very compelling given um, what we do know about a lot of people and how they have experienced the whole COVID situation. So my answer, sir, is uh, please do um, provide comment. Uh, go, go online and provide comment. Throw out an idea. I would like to hear more. I would like to hear um, what could be done. We do probably need to review, though, and make sure it is truly um, it, it does conform to the federal guidelines for the American Rescue Act. We've had a lot of great ideas on what to do with this money, and we've quite frankly we have had to turn some away because they did not fit the criteria. But I, for one, am very interested in hearing more. One of the things, so turning the focus back to broadband, we did have a question come in from Jonathan online earlier, um, will these funds, the American Rescue Act funds, I believe, be used to lower my bill for broadband? And who would like to take that? Irina, is that something that you can maybe give us a little bit of the ways that it could be used? Uh, yeah, thanks for the question. Um, there are already ongoing programs that will help offset um, the affordability of, of broadband um, monthly bills. Right now there's a subsidy out for $50 a month and it'll be lowered to $30 a month, but it's not a program that is being taken advantage of enough. As far as these funds, I understand that um, the decision process for how to allocate um, these funds are still ongoing, but as I mentioned before, there are going to be many other sources of grant funding for broadband infrastructure that we definitely need to look to the future um, to take that opportunity to invest. We actually have another question that pertaining to the broadband topic uh, that came in a little earlier, and this one came from Kim. How are you going to be able to improve my service speed with this money? Um, I think we've seen a couple ideas on that, but Irina, can you give us the basics? Because I, I, I do have an opinion on what we've seen so far, but can you get us going on that one? I'll just say very generally that there's a variety of different models in which service can be improved. Um, it varies with many types of funding strategies and partnership strategies. And so really this is up to um, you, you guys as Douglas County Commissioners to think long-term strategically on. You know, one of, broadband is an issue that we knew early on was going to be a, um, a, a funding uh, an option that was capably funded through the ARPA funds. And we've talked quite a bit. Uh, we have communities in Colorado that have formed their own broadband departments. And I, I think, I, 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 don't, I always hate to speak for my colleagues and put words in their mouth,
but I think that's an option that we've incl we're inclined to reject. We're not really inclined to have a Department of Broadband here in Douglas County. But what we've been talking about is finding ways to close the gaps. Um, we have neighborhoods, we have areas here in Douglas County that are um, probably are served, but they're probably underserved. And I'll tell you, after 20 years in the software industry, selling business software to people, if you can't get the proper amount of speed in your line to use a piece of business software, you have no broadband. You have no, no way to use that. And so it's not just giving people the ability to surf the net, uh, you know, stream videos or stuff like that. It, it is about um, being able to close the gaps so that people could use broadband to uh, live and work. Hey, let's go ahead and move on to our second investment priority, which is community recovery. Uh, Ruby, I wonder if you could give us a brief overview, please. Sure. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ruby Richards, and I am the Deputy Director of the Department of Human Services here in Douglas County. And I will um, explain to you four um, proposals that have been submitted with regard to community recovery. The first is with Shiloh House Family Resource Pavilion. Their request is for $1 million to um, add on construction to their resource pavilion. The resource pavilion currently serves children that are involved in the child welfare system and adolescents who are in their home but struggling with their family. It gives an opportunity for everyone to take a time out with the child to have a safe place to stay, um, have supervision, receive meals, and for the family to receive therapeutic services in order for the family to, to return home together and be whole again. So that is their request. The second is from the Douglas County Housing Authority. They are putting forward a $1 million proposal to um, offset some of the uh, acquisition costs as they are seeking to secure 15 units at the Stone Creek condominiums. These condominiums will be used for families that um, either because of the pandemic or other reasons are having housing insecurities. Um, these housing um, opportunities could be temporary for them, transitional for them, or permanent housing options for them. The next uh, proposal that was put forward is from Help and Hope. Help and Hope is a um, nonprofit here in the county that serves uh, families who are in need of food resources, um, other services and, and resources here in the county where they're, um, they just don't have enough income to meet all of their needs. Their proposal is for construction costs for a new facility to locate that facility within a retail-oriented location so that it's easier for folks to get to and to um, feel like they're, they're a normal part of, of our community shopping just like the rest of us do. And the final proposal is um, nonprofit grants. So this is an opportunity for nonprofits to put forward grant proposals that would help folks who, uh, their, their nonprofit helps folks who have been impacted by COVID. So uh, looking at proposals for capital improvements so that they can continue to increase their service to those who have been impacted by COVID. Thank you. So thank you, Ruby. Roger, do you have anybody online? Let's uh, call up Nick next. Nick, go ahead. Can you hear me? Oh, hello, can you hear me? Go ahead. All right, thank you. Um, I, I, I'm not sure, maybe you have sort of covered this when you say that um, you're, you're happy to hear any and all ideas, but I guess wondering if there's any sort of specific sort of application process um, for, for businesses that may um, believe they have good use for the funds. And just to be a little bit more specific about that, um, I recently started a business, and by that I mean uh, about March of 2020, that has to do with the building of furniture specific to meditation, uh, because there's really nothing out there that is really conducive to meditation. Everyone kind of makes do with whatever they have out there. Um, so the business I'm building both makes meditation-specific furniture. We've already applied for a number of patents. We're building a large uh, library of free resources for people to come and learn how to meditate. 
um, you know, independent of the furniture that we're going to sell. So this kind of hits a couple of different targets for the use uh, of the ARPA money, which is, you know, mental health as well as economic recovery. Um, and so I'm wondering if there's a specific sort of application process or if you're just saying, um, you know, get in touch with us via the commissioner's office email that's published on the website. Um, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'm, I'm sorry if this is already kind of answered. I'm just, I, I only recently became aware of the town hall, so I, I really appreciate it. This is Dan Avery. I, I will uh, use your question as an opportunity to describe a little bit about what the process will look like going forward. Uh, the county intends to host additional town halls like the one tonight over the next several months to delve into these priority spending areas in greater detail. These may involve specific pro proposals being presented and discussed in public forums like this one. Uh, staff anticipates that this public process will assist the board in defining the funding allocations to each of these priority spending areas and then within these spending areas to develop criteria by which to evaluate projects. This criteria could be a, a grant criteria or, or just criteria by which the board would judge proposals. The county's website will be a great resource for you going forward to track this process. ARPA specific content on the website can be found at douglas.co.us slash ARPA. Question, and I think, you know, part of this theme for Douglas County is that this isn't our money, this is your money. And we're a little bit different than the federal government in that we have a balanced budget, virtually zero debt, and our sales tax revenue is up. So um, we have healthy resources here already uh, outside of uh, ARPA. And so we really want to be thoughtful with every penny, even though it's a, a significant amount of money. So some really good questions so far. And for those that have joined late, good evening, and thank you for joining tonight's town hall conversation about the American Rescue Plan Act. ARPA of 2021. We want to hear about how we can best utilize these funds and get your input. You can also send us comment through the website at douglas.co.us forward slash town hall. So let's get back to some conversation and we'll take some more questions from our live audience in the hearing room. Who else has some questions out here? Gentleman in the back. Hey, sir, how's it going? I have a comment regarding use of the Community Recovery Cup funds. Thank you. Um, good evening, commissioners and staff. My name is Jim Weglars. I'm a volunteer with the Help and Hope Center for approximately 10 years. The Help and Hope Center on Park Street, where we currently operate, we've been there since 2010. It's an 18,000 square foot building that we are utilizing every square inch. Plus, we're also using some space of our adjacent business neighbor who was very, very kind to us. So the obviously needs of the community and, and why we're here, why uh, Help and Hope has asked for funding through the community recovery aspect of this is the fact that as the population has increased in Douglas County over the past, whatever, 20, 30 years, whatever it is, um, the Help and Hope Center, formerly the Douglas Elbert Task Force, has been in operation now for almost 35 years serving a portion of our community that is less fortunate than others. So again, we would like the opportunity for a portion of the funds so that we can expand the facility and give us the opportunity to serve more folks from a social services and community standpoint. Thank you. Thanks for being here. We appreciate the Help and Hope Center. I feel like I might have heard a question in there. Does anybody want to uh, respond to that? Okay, well, we, Lauren, did you want to respond? Okay. Um, any other questions here in the hearing room? Who else has a question for our panel tonight? See a lot of smart folks here. I don't know. Okay, we'll move on to our, our next segment, which is economic recovery, and I'll turn it over to Lauren Pulver. Thank you, Commissioner. I'm Lauren Pulver, and I'm a public policy analyst in the Department of Community Development. Through the Douglas County Economic Recovery Task Force and outreach from the business community, the county has heard that there are workforce needs in the community for both small businesses and large employers. And this continues to be a major challenge facing our business community. To date, the county has received proposals from Arapahoe Community College to address workforce development, 
a proposal for additional staff at the Aurora South Metro Small Business Development Center to serve Douglas County businesses, and proposals requesting relief for industries impacted by COVID-19 closures, such as the Park Meadow Mall. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. And I have an online question that was sent to me from Sean. He says, last year the county provided over 19 million in support for small businesses in the county. Can you tell us a little about how that was used? Thank you, I can take that. Um, the county did develop two small business grant programs last year using CARES Act funds. The first was a small business PPE reimbursement grant in which the county used over 1.5 million in CARES Act funds to reimburse 268 small businesses for expenses directly related to COVID-19. The second was a restaurant and event venue impact grant. The county provided $18 million to 207 different restaurants and event venues located in the county to cover a portion of revenue loss from 2019 compared to 2020 due to indoor dining closures and event closures. Thank you, Lauren. Commissioner Teal. Commissioner Thomas, um, so we still have uh, just under 30 minutes. So uh, folks who are joining us uh, on the phone, please press star three on your keypad to get in the queue. If you would like to participate online, you can visit douglas.co.us forward slash town hall. So let's move on to our fourth investment priority, mental and behavioral health. I'd like to ask uh, Laura to speak on this topic. Thank you, Commissioner Teal. Good evening, everyone. My name is Laura Sinconi, and I coordinate the Douglas County Mental Health Initiative. We have received six proposals to date under the umbrella of mental and behavioral health. The first comes from our Community Mental Health Center. Uh, this would provide the initial cost to establish a walk-in center open to all ages and a 10,000 square foot, 16 bed child and adolescent crisis stabilization unit. The closest CSUs and WICs uh, for youth are in Colorado Springs and Aurora. Douglas County currently does not have either of these facilities, and we don't want families driving to get their kids help or receive urgent mental health care, so this would um, cover the initial cost for those facilities. The second is the expansion of the Care Compact program, which is a program of the Mental Health Initiative that links existing service providers who offer case management services and serve some of the most vulnerable individuals in Douglas County with complex behavioral health and mental health disorders. So we want to expand this program and allow individuals themselves and loved ones to refer um, individuals themselves and uh, others to refer their loved ones into the program. The third is to expand the community response team, which is our local co-responder program, which pairs law enforcement and mental health clinicians who respond in the community and offer mental health crisis supports. This would expand the CR team to six adult teams and two youth teams and allow seven day a week coverage in the county. Both of these programs have uh, utilize the IT infrastructure platform for case management and data collection, and we would propose to expand that infrastructure. The fourth is a suicide prevention grant program, which would accept proposals for evidence-based research informed and promising practice interventions for suicide prevention. The fifth is for veterans and mental health. We have approximately 20,000 veterans living in Douglas County. This would establish specific veteran mental health programs through the Community Mental Health Center and train our veteran service officers to pr provide peer-to-peer -peer support to their fellow veterans. And the final um, project is uh, Seed funding for the 988 suicide prevention hotline. This has been approved through a work session and would allow um, funding to be provided in anticipation of the launch of 988 in July 2022. 
Thank you, Laura. And you know, I just want to take a moment to to personally thank you on behalf of the county. I know all of us are really impressed with the incredible work that you have done and Barbara Drake has done with a lot of our community partners here in the gallery and on line with regard to the mental health initiative. It's been a bit of a runaway success for the whole state and it's a labor of love that we really appreciate. I know we heard from the director of Children's Hospital that it's a mental health emergency for youth uh, throughout the state. So this, this board is very passionate about mental health, particularly for our young people. Um, let's take a question about mental health. Roger, do we have a, a question for our listeners? We do. Cheryl, it's your turn. Go ahead. Yes, I recently attended the Colorado Municipal League uh, policy <laughs> and was informed that the state is looking at receiving $490 million in federal dollars for mental health needs. I'm wondering how you're looking at an overlap between what we might be looking at as a county versus what's coming into the state. That's a great question. Who would like to take that? Uh, I'd be I happy can to take that. Thank you. Oh, Commissioner Thomas, of course, please. Thank you. I'd be happy to take that. Yeah. So the county actually has four, I'm sorry, the state has $450 million that will be used for mental health services. The state formed a task force of 25 legislators, and then they also formed a sub-panel of 25 subject matter experts. I was one of the 25 members of subject panel experts who represented commissioners and council people across the state. I spent hours at the Capitol and online talking with these experts, looking at all the various options where we could save, where we could provide this money around the state. We provided our final report on Friday to the um, task force, and tomorrow I will be at the Capitol all day long meeting with the legislators on that task force. One of the programs that I most support is $90 million being set aside for matching grants to counties so counties can continue building the programs that they have in place already. There will be more to come in, in January. I expect we will see legislation that will explain how those $450 million can be spent. Thank you for asking that question, Cheryl. Roger, do we have other questions? We do. Let's hear from Larry next. Larry, go ahead. Yes, hello. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I couldn't help but note uh, the statement by the, uh, I'm going to call her the Fiscal Hawk uh, Commissioner. And I'm also very aware that Douglas County is I believe the eighth richest in the country. I also heard the comment that uh, we have a balanced budget and revenues, uh, tax revenues are up. I wonder if there's any consideration being given to perhaps share with other areas within Colorado or perhaps in the country that are in much greater need of $68 million. Or is that even possible given the guidelines? Yeah, that's a really good question, and, and technically that is possible, and in many ways, I think Douglas County views itself as a good neighbor uh, and a good partner. We partner regionally and statewide on a variety of issues, uh, and I think you just heard mental health is, is only one of them. We know that ARPA funds have been distributed proportionally based on a formula, and so uh, my hope is that there's a lot of collaboration and partnership uh, both in our region and throughout the state, but thank you for that question. Um, with that, are there any other mental health questions? I think we're going to move on to our fifth investment priority because it's an important one, water and wastewater investments. So let's go back to Lauren for this topic. Lauren? Thank you, Commissioner. So county staff sent out a request for letters of interest for water and wastewater projects on October 25th, requesting entities to submit general information such as a project location, size of the population impacted by the project, estimated costs of the project, and an anticipated timeline. The county received 17 submitted proposals, many of which included multiple projects, totaling over $247 million. The proposals reflect a need for water and wastewater funding throughout the county in both the rural and urban areas. Proposed projects range from replacing aging infrastructure in water and sanitation districts, solving water quality issues, increasing water storage, and increasing water supply in the county. We received two proposals, proposals addressing water supply, one proposal for regional wastewater conveyance and treatment, 
and 14 proposals from individual water providers and authorities. Thank you. Well, thanks so much, Lauren, for filling us in on what's coming so far. Uh, Roger, I think we have a caller that wanted to ask a question pertaining to water and wastewater. We do. Jared, go right ahead. Hi, thank you. Uh, my name is Jared Romero. Uh, today we opened the town hall saying that we don't do things to people and that we do things with people. Um, I believe that if you approve the RWR proposal, you will be doing detrimental things to our fellow Coloradans. Um, I ask you to please consider the residents who live in the San Luis Valley and consider the current state of water in that region. I believe that the RWR proposal is in direct contradiction with the Colorado State Water Plan and will have detrimental effects on the three U.S. Fish and Wildlife Refuges, the Sand Dunes National Park, uh, wildlife, agriculture, and tourism in the region. Additionally, the optics of this proposal appear to be taking water from a water-stressed rural Hispanic population to provide water to a predominantly white affluent Front Range community. Thank you. So Jared, thank you for that question. And I, I'm sure there may be a lot of responses on this panel to that, but I'll just tell you as one commissioner, um, I'm a fifth generation Coloradan. I'm also Latino and uh, many of my family members hail from the San Luis Valley and we have generations uh, of, of connections to that region of our state. Um, as one, I, I made it very clear both publicly and internally that I, I don't intend to make any decision here that would negatively impact the people in that community. That said, I, I also am not a fan of policies that uh, would, would purport to keep people um, from achieving the American dream. And I've seen generations of my family struggle, frankly, in Southern Colorado. And so I, I would like any of, of those individuals I know and some that I don't know, be able to succeed if they choose to do that. Um, that said, we are so early in this process. I think it was shared with you, we have about $246 million in water proposals alone, uh, and we only have 68.2 million in ARPA funds total for all of these different um, buckets of potential funding. So we're in the listening phase, um, and I really hope we can continue to hear from uh, people like you, others from the San Luis Valley, your elected officials. Um, I think we're in really close contact with many of them. So this is just the beginning of the conversation, and we really invite you to, to partner and continue to, to, to dialogue with us. Yeah, thanks, Abe. And I'll just to kind of dogpile on to that one, I mean, I definitely have interest in any project that does bring water to Douglas County. Our job is to provide for the people of Douglas County. With that said, uh, I grew up in Greeley. I mean, I, I actually spent a summer throwing tubes in the irrigation ditches of Weld County. I could tell you the importance of water in rural areas. So. I'd want to take it under a uh, good look. I'd want to uh, scrutinize what the impacts in the area actually are uh, for the folks in the San Luis Valley and make sure that we get put together a win-win uh, by every means. With that said, I do think, Roger, I think we have another caller uh, ready to go on water and wastewater. Let's hear from Rio next. Go ahead. Good evening. Thank you. Go ahead, ma'am. We're ready for you. Roger, did we lose that call? We might. It looks like we might have. Let's do an online question. And that is from Lisa. She asks, what water saving measures has Douglas County, does Douglas County have in place? Well, I can do a little bit of that. And mostly I could do about that because um, uh, I get to talk about what we do in Castle Rock. Uh, I spent six and a half years on the Castle Rock Town Council, um, and, and it's in Castle Rock, that is a municipal water district. And so the town council is the board of directors for Castle Rock Water. Um, I still find it amazing when I hear about uh, people living in different parts of Colorado who are either just going on some kind of watering restriction and watering their lawns, or they don't have any water restrictions. Um, Castle Rock has had water restrictions since I've lived here in Castle Rock, and that's 23 years. Um, I know we had a uh, zero escape program. I see Mark Marlowe here in the room. Mark uh, chose to label it as Colorado Scape, 
And every year there's a competition in um, Castle Rock for Xeriscape. Uh, there's a lottery that happens and people get a Xeriscape or a Colorado Scape makeover uh, provided by the town of Castle Rock. And then, of course, Castle Rock offers classes um, every year, uh, periodically through the year, in order to teach people how to be water smart, how to make their homes water smart and not waste water and how to best use the water that they pay for. More specifically, Castle Rock is uh, somewhat unique in that it has a three-tier water billing system where for low water use, you pay a lower rate. Then there's a second level of use, and you pay a slightly higher rate until finally you hit that big water users, which, uh, sorry, Mark, but when my kids are home and taking showers twice a day because they're home on vacation, um, we hit that third level water use, and I myself have had a couple months where I did pay that top water rate. I didn't like it. I tried to do everything I could after the kids left the house to make sure that uh, they didn't pay that. I do know we have other water districts here in Douglas County who follow, if not all of those measures, some of those measures. So that's a, a little bit of what we have going in Douglas County for managing and controlling water use. Um, Roger, do we have another caller on the phone? Let's go to Sandy next. Go ahead. Sandy, you're live on the phone. Hello, Sandy. Sounds like Sandy's at a party and she's uh, doing other things. Roger, uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and take us into the audience. Does anybody have a question with water and wastewater? Ma'am, I see you've got your hand up. Hi, I'm George. What's your name? My name is Tamar Ellen Tuck, and I have a question about water, but I just want to put a plug for mental health. I'm a family, child and family therapist at All Health Network serving Douglas County, and I can tell you the need is enormous, and you just have to read the newspaper to know what kind of a crisis we're in, especially with our children and families. So please do fund community mental health. It's so important. But um, I'm here tonight because I spent 20 years in the San Luis Valley, and I actually came to this area to get a master's in um, counseling, and I'm working as a clinical social worker here, and I plan to return to the valley. So although I wasn't born there, I'm not multi-generational. The valley has been my home. In the valley, I worked um, as a director for the Weatherization Agency. I worked in land use planning in Swatch County, where the Boyce Ranch is located. I worked in um, the 1990s and following in the footsteps of many others, um, working to stop the last trans space and diversion effort. Um, after 20 years of work, the U.S. Congress stepped in and bought the majority of the Baca Ranch. Gary Boyce kept his personal ranch, his personal property, which is the property that's under consideration right now. The reason that the Congress bought that property was to uh, secure the water for the National Park, which was then a national monument, and it was expanded to become a national park because of the transwater diversion, because the water support, the volume of water in the aquifer literally supports the sand dunes. So without the water, we don't have any sand dunes. They also expanded the San Isabel National Forest, including important recharge areas for the aquifer, and they created Ma'am, did you have a question? And they created the latest, um, but I think it's important that people understand. They created the the next, the 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 uh, newest Baca National Wild National Wildlife in the system. These are national treasures. They're not just county treasures. They're not just state treasures. They're national treasures. And um, I think it's important. I worked for a long time with county commissions as in land use. I think you have the hardest job and the most important job of elected officials in this nation because this is where the rubber hits the road. And these are really important decisions that you're making, and I ask you to make them with Colorado in mind and the nation in mind. These are really important resources for all of us. Well, thank you very much. I mean, those are very important factors that 
um, I know that um, we've been exposed a bit to in just the um, initial conversations we've specifically had about the RWR project. And um, I appreciate it. You gave us a couple of things to dig a little deeper on, and I very much appreciate it. Do we have any other questions? Yes, sir. Let me come around to you. I'm Matt Collins with the LeBeers Ward and Transportation District. Um, just oh, hang on. Let me get you over there. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Give us your name again. I'm Matt Collett with the LeBeers Ward and Sanitation District. I know we're not there yet, but just how do we understand how, if, if let's say we do get funds, how are they going to be allocated? Are they going to be grants? Are they going to be matching funds, loans? Um, of what nature are these funds going to be allocated? Yeah, you know, that's something we've talked a little bit about in terms of how those uh, funds will go out. We have talked about a loan program, but we found that we had some issues, and there's going to be some strict controls if we take it as a loan program. Other projects, we've actually thought that if we were to fund that, that would have to be a straight grant, uh, a straight grant over of money. Um, and then there are other projects that are actually under consideration, particularly in the water and wastewater, that actually could lead to renewable revenues that could come back um, through, uh, we could, everything's on the table right now. Quite frankly, at this stage of the game, we have some ideas, but nothing is set. Let's go to the phones, Roger, for our next question, please. Okay, James, it's uh, your turn. Go ahead. Uh, excuse me. Uh, my question is twofold. Uh, the first part of it uh, was related to uh, and it might have been previously answered, but the $68.2 million, how it was predetermined by area to be allocated. That was one. The the second part is, and this is different than what, what I previously called it, is that I've retired from the cable industry after 37, 38 years. I've been in Colorado for 18 years, so I know about all about Comcast and any other cable operator, uh, Charter, and anybody else that are serving uh, any area in Colorado. So when I hear underserved areas, having worked in cable for 37 years, it's kind of frustrating to hear that there are underserved areas unless they were chose not to serve them in the first place because of density. And if that's the case, then how much of the 68.2 uh, billion is going to be um, allocated to that? Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I'd like to take that in two parts. Dan, can you help answer that first question pertaining to how these were allocated out? How how Douglas County got its 68 million? Yes, I can. It was a population-based allocation, and that population-based allocation factored in uh, the population of Douglas County. Uh, municipalities also got an allocation, and in uh, in Douglas County, the town of Castle Rock received 5.7 million, 4.5 million or so went to the town of Parker, 3.3 million to the city of Lone Tree, and 2.7 million to the city of Castle Pines. I can also touch briefly on uh, the second question, which was about uh, what constitutes an underserved area. Uh, the, an underserved area under the American Rescue Plan Act is one that has download speeds of less than 25 megabytes per second and upload speeds of less than three megabytes per second. Uh, any project that extend, ser extended service into these areas would need to result in speeds of 100 megabytes per second each direction. And it looks like we're almost to the end of our time, Roger. I think we're maybe going to go to the phone for, for a, a few more. Roger? All right. Let's hear from Irene next. Go ahead. Hi. This is Irene. I have a question uh, for Ruby. Hi, Ruby. Um, you mentioned earlier that uh, you need some funds for the Health and Hope. I, I hope that's the one uh, that um, you mentioned earlier. Is that equal to a community health center? And if it doesn't, um, if Douglas County has any community health centers, thank you. 
Yes, thank you for the question. Yes, there is a community mental health center in Douglas County that is all health network and they have multiple locations throughout the county. Um, I believe that was your question. I also think I heard a question about um, help and hope, but I'm not, if you could repeat it, that would be great because I couldn't quite hear it. Thank you, Ruby, for that answer. Do we have another question online, Roger? We do indeed. Christine asks, what is the timeline for making a decision on these proposals? Over the next several months, the county will continue to host uh, more specific town halls on each of these topic areas. Um, from those town halls, the board uh, is seeking to identify um, proportionate investments in each of these project areas. Uh, from each of those funding categories, we would then develop um, priority spending mechanisms, including potentially grant funding. Um, but we're looking at a horizon of at least the next three months to uh, continue this public dialogue. Hey, thank you very much. We're almost to the end of our hour tonight. Be sure to join us for future town halls by visiting douglas.co.us forward slash town hall to sign up and ensure that you're notified. Before we conclude, let's go back to your Douglas County Commissioners for some final comments. Commissioner Layton, you're first. Roger, thanks, and, and thank you to everyone that took the time to be with us tonight, both in person and online. I think you heard us say that this is really the beginning of the conversation, not the end, but we've had 34 live town halls through COVID, so hopefully um, everyone recognizes that we're not casual about engagement, and this is your money, this is your government. We work for you, not the other way around, and we hope to be good neighbors to those um, around us. Uh, we've been having a lot of conversations about these larger buckets, and when we think about things like broadband, my goodness, it's, it's the fourth utility. It's also a traffic solution, meaning you don't have to go to a big box in the tech center if you want to work from Larkspur. So we want to make sure that our citizens have access to high-speed internet because it's so important for our economy. So really looking forward to more engagement on that. I, I wanted to recognize a couple of uh, amazing people in the room as well, uh, one of which is Pam Shane Kelly from the wonderful Park Meadows, uh, the premier retail resort, um, not only in Douglas County, but probably the state and maybe the nation. I don't know, Pam. But um, when we think about the importance of experiential retail and uh, the value that, that those particular sites bring to Douglas County, I'm, I'm reminded of an opportunity to really to continue to engage that community in ways um, that, that support our economy. Uh, Dr. Eric Dunker is here or was here for a little while. And he represents the Sturm Collaboration Campus. Um, if I had to pick one priority right now in terms of COVID recovery, it would be workforce. We've seen 360,000 jobs lost in the state of Colorado over this last uh, year and a half. And, you know, for us, 80% of the people that left the workforce were women, primarily to take care of kids that were sent home when they didn't have in-person learning. So I, I'm really passionate about collaboration campuses, training, rehiring, helping people get back to work and the dignity of a job, because that addresses a lot of issues, including people experiencing homelessness, mental health issues. Uh, the value of a job is significant in Douglas County. So those are things that are on my mind, but I will say just as a final point for me, one of the things I campaigned on three years ago was clean and abundant water for generations. And that is a legacy investment that I think will be impactful for generations. And I think about the leadership that occurred in our state around T-Rex. And that wasn't easy. That was difficult. That was challenging. But in my mind, as a fifth generation Coloradan, that was one of those legacy projects um, that was incredible for our economy, for our citizens, and our way of life. So I'm thinking not just about today, but you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years into the future and far beyond. Commissioner Teal. Thank you, Commissioner Layden. Um, looking back on the hour, um, one of the things that really stood out to me was this couple up front with one of the first questions that talked about being in a business that uh, didn't fit for the economic relief that we did see awarded last year. And so um, if my colleagues, if it pleases the board, um, I would like my colleagues to consider joining me and perhaps uh, reopening some sort of bid process to, to address 
companies like yours, because if you're here, you're one of hundreds here to talk to us. I'm sure there are other businesses that are probably out there that didn't qualify last year, are still feeling the pinch of the crisis, and could probably use some assistance to um, you know, get that hand up and get back to work. Uh, the other thing that really impresses me, um, uh, quite frankly, I look around the room and I know there are water people here in the room. I know there are people here with water projects. They have bids that they've submitted. And we saw how the largest single dollar value category of all these ARPA categories is in water infrastructure. Water infrastructure is uh, something, you know, in a way it's the gift that keeps giving because uh, you can start a project, but you must maintain it. It's like a golf course. It's never really finished. It's never really perfect. It's always something that is always being worked and maintained. And so, and then of course, um, I think it's very um, impressive on me how how very expensive these uh, infrastructure projects are. I mean, I see the gentleman who from Perry Park. They talked me through uh, a couple months back the issues that they have. I see folks uh, from other areas with other water projects, and of course, the gentleman with a, the question from Levere's. That is all very pressing. So um, that's very impressive to me. And then of course, the we did hear from folks outside the county who have concerns about projects and the effect it could have there. Um, uh, I'm very mindful of that, and I think I, I would ask my colleagues as we go through this process, I would ask our staff as we go through this process to make sure that we're doing the right thing, um, definitely for Douglas County and the people of Douglas County, but we're also mindful of the impact our decisions have even outside of our county. Um, I think that's uh, those are my impressions from this evening. Everybody, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for lending your voice in the conversations before the kind of, and then the questions here during the meeting. This is how good things happen in the public process. With that said, Commissioner Thomas, would you like to wrap us up? I will. Thank you, Commissioner Teal. I really would like to thank the people who are here on the room, in the room and online because we really want to hear from all of you about what your interests are. And we heard questions about broadband about community recovery, about economic recovery, water and wastewater. And finally, there were questions about mental health and behavioral health. Um, that, that's the one that's most important to me. I served as a Douglas County coroner for four years. I sat in far too many kitchen, kitchens with people, along with Chief Duffy back here with the Sheriff's Department, with families who just lost a loved one. Douglas County stepped up its mental health program in 2017 after we had a really, really sad murder-suicide here. I believe that we have the best county mental health program in the entire state, if not the country. And I believe that by spending more money in our mental health, we will save more lives, we will improve the quality of people's lives, as well as the people around them who support them. So know that mental health and um, behavioral health are the ones that I think we can make really legacy investments in our community, and that's the top of my list. So thank you again, everyone, for joining us. Roger, it's all yours. Thank you. On behalf of Douglas County, we appreciate you joining us this evening. If we did not get to your question tonight, we invite you to submit any questions you may have on this or other topics to douglas.co.us forward slash citizen connect. We certainly hope you'll join us again in a future town hall and wish you a very good night.